Things I do understand why this is exciting. OBS just added AV1 support for YouTube live streams. This is super cool. It's happening. This is super cool. Want to talk us through this one? Yeah, so OBS Studio's 29.1 update supports streaming to YouTube using the AV1 encoder. Streaming with AV1 results in boosted image quality and bit rate that can be reduced by up to... Uh, and bit rate that can be reduced by up to 40% without sacrificing image quality. Yeah, so you can kind of pick one. Yeah. You can keep your bit rate the same and have better image quality. Yes. Or you can lower your bit rate, which could save you on bandwidth costs or data cap. Oh, well, those are the same thing. Um, could also make it easier for your viewers to watch at original quality, I guess. I'm trying to think well, of that's that's more reverting to the previous one where you're you're gaining more quality right, with less sure. bandwidth. I think the main way this is going to be used, which is a massive win, is to achieve the same amount, but with way less bandwidth. Yeah. And that's that okay, the cynic in me will go, Wow, good, a win for Amazon. I'm sure glad that they can but, save money on all these Twitch streams. But this is actually a W for everybody. It is. Yeah unnecessary internet bits unnecessary traffic is harmful for absolutely everyone involved it clogs up the pipes or tubes the tubes excuse me it sorry it's just a series of tubes no but it as much what as that you in your tubes? is a stupid analogy and the internet is not a series of tubes it's actually not entirely wrong either yeah the more data that you have unnecessarily taking up your switching capacity the less data you can deliver more quickly for everything else. Yeah. This is a win all around. This is good. And it's going to cost you maybe a little bit in terms of encoding and decoding power consumption. That's, I think, maybe the, the, the worst possible outcome of this. But as AV1 hardware encode and decode becomes far more prevalent over, I'd say, probably the next two years or so. Especially it's, good implementations. It's going to be like kind of on any new product within about the next 24 months, I would guess. This is going to be freaking awesome. I mean, we've tested it fairly extensively, especially when Intel released their ARC graphics cards and we found out, hey, they're the first ones to deliver a next gen uh, GPU. With AV1 encoding, how does this work? The AV1 encoding felt next gen. No, it really no real is. other part of the card necessarily did, but the AV1 coding 100% did. 100%. They totally delivered there. Another sign in favor of AV1 approaching mass adoption is that Matrox Video, whose graphics cards are widely used for workstations, video walls, and digital signage, has released a new series of Luma graphics cards powered by Intel's Alchemist. We are just talking about this architecture, which includes Intel's excellent AV1 transcoding ability. Makes sense. Twitch does not currently support AV1, um, but I, I'd bet on it coming. Dave, I mean, I guess they had that source code leak a while back. I, 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 we, could, we could probably check and see if they're... If AV1 we were, was not very flavor of the month. If time. we were unethical folks who would download the Twitch source code leak, which I am not saying we are, we could look at it and we could see if maybe they had some early work on AV1 or something like that that they were that they were looking into. But yeah, you don't want to you don't want to kick that business. They were definitely working on it at the time. I mean, if if not Twitch, then certainly Amazon. There's no way that folks like the the team that's working on Prime Prime Video or Netflix. Um, or YouTube, there's no way that they haven't been working on AV1 because for years they've been working away at this standard, uh, working on what the hardware and code and decode implementations will look like, bringing it to maturity. Uh, this whole process takes like, just with how big the industry is and how slow moving it is now, it can take 10 years. I mean, how long have we been trying to move on from H.264? HEVC was one attempt, but the licensing fees, and I know there's been there's been other attempts as well. A huge part of the problem has ended up being licensing multiple times. Whereas AV1 is a game changer because my understanding is it costs nothing to implement. It still doesn't have the same licensing setup as H.264. I don't know all the intricate details of mm. the differences between them, but I know it's not like identical. Hold on. There might be a fee. Let me just have a look here. Royalty-free standards are not free of cost. And this is blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what I do know 
is that it's much more appealing and therefore is seeing much broader adoption than HEVC. I know when I was when I was hanging out down at NASA, which is one of the coolest things to say ever, I was talking to one of their tech people about uh, video compression, encoding, transferring data, all the different complications they have around that, going around the dark side of the moon, going to Mars, the data complications of those different situations. And I asked, what about AV1? And yeah. They currently use H.264. And they would love to use AV1, but they're concerned about licensing issues. Oh, interesting. Even even at that level, concerned about licensing issues. <sighs> kind of sucks. It would help them a lot because the amount of stuff that they have to send back and forth and the fixed pipe that they have is is a very difficult equation for them. Um, but, so AV1 yeah. apparently has royalty-free licensing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there is no cost. Um, so yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to get you guys an update on that. Cause I'm actually kind of interested. Uh, squid hominid over on float plane chat is saying it'll be a game changer for Twitch once they add AV1, because right now you're hard capped at six megabit per second and you aren't guaranteed transcoding. So unless you're a prominent streamer, um, basically the platform has kind of self selected itself, um, it's been to be limited forever. to, you know, two and a half to three megabytes per megabit per second streams, unless you're a big deal on the platform already, which hurts discoverability of small creators, because why are you going to tune in and watch someone playing this game unless they have an absolutely electric personality? Why are you going to tune in and watch someone play this game at low craptastic quality when you can tune into one of the big streamers and it can look freaking awesome and probably sound better too? I mean, the kinds of compromises you have to make to do to stream at two and a half, three megabit per second are pretty, pretty yucky. AV1 will be able to do 1080p at that and still look pretty decent. I'm excited. This is freaking awesome. Yeah. So. When's Floatplane going to support it? <sighs> we'll support it eventually. It's not in the cards right now. We have, we have some pretty monster uh, bandwidth caps on our live stream the last time I checked. Um, so. Yeah. I don't know. We're not working on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, fair we, enough. Will, we will work on it eventually. Uh, we are not working on it right now. We got other stuff to do. 